The technique I'm using so far this evening is dead sticking. I was dead sticking kind of right in the area where you see these heavier marks down here. And I just pulled it up above it, watched this mark kind of rise up to it. A combination of those two techniques, dead sticking, and then kind of pulling up and doing some jigging. And this fish just couldn't take it anymore. So there you go, I'm gonna put them back. Bye. Welcome back to the channel one and all, Fish Brain Shane here, and I'm doing a video that I've been planning to do for a long time, and I'm really glad that I'm finally doing it. How to find and catch crappies on ice, and really, how to ice fish, and how to be more successful. One of the things I relate to a lot of different people is that I didn't ice fish for a long time. I've got a, you know, about 40 years of fishing in, but I've only got about maybe six or eight years of ice fishing in, and uh, maybe only the last four or five years have been really successful for me. And the reason why is because a couple of people took the time to teach me exactly how to fish, and I picked up a couple of different techniques from each of them and kind of made them my own. Um, so I am going to do that on this video for you because not everybody knows an ice fisherman, and like me, when you were a kid, maybe you went out ice fishing and you saw all the adults were just drinking and having a good time, and nobody really caught anything well ice fishing can be a time where you can really smash the fish and I'm gonna show you that tonight so I'm really glad you're here for this episode I'm waiting for my truck to warm up right here in my driveway and in the meantime let's bring the music you know how we do it let's go fishing let's go fishing let's go fishing now Be my huckleberry. Come on. Oh, got him. Yes. Finally. Yes. That away. That away. Whew. Needed this fish, you guys. Needed it. Got him to bite. Um, he's probably 10 inches. Ten and a half, but he is all effed up. Man, you guys, look at this fish. Wow, this is crazy. You gotta see this, look at this. Man, look at that side. Oh yeah. He's wow, all messed crazy. up. Big old lump on him. Big old crappie, I mean a good sized crappie, probably yeah. ten and a half inches, something like that, but just look at the thump on that guy. I don't know what both, that is. Both sides. Both sides, yeah. Well, we're gonna get him back in one way or the other. Lamprey First fish bites. of the night, you know. It doesn't look like lamprey. It just looks like some kind of defect or something. Look at it from this way. He's thriving. Like a thump. He's still eating. Yeah, we're gonna get him in there. Get him in there and let him go. All right, let's get on going, buddy. Nice fish, man. Oh, get back down there. He's a survivor, obviously. See you later. Sweet, got off the schneid, that's what I needed. The technique I'm using so far this evening is dead sticking. And what that means is you put on usually a jig and I always recommend tungsten. Not only because lead, you know, is poisonous for the lake and the environment, but because tungsten gets you down faster to the fish, it just drops so much faster. So throw on a tungsten jig, nice and small, really small for ice fishing, and um, get a little, you know, a little crappie minnow or one of those gulp fries, you know, the little one inch fry of different colors and different sorts, and use all of those for bait. Pay attention to your presentation, okay? Your presentation is extremely important. So when you have on one of those gulp fries or a, a fake bait of any kind, you wanna pull that knot over on the loop of your jig so that your jig and that bait hang completely sideways so it looks as natural as possible. When you have a minnow on, you wanna pull that knot all the way to the top so that it hangs more down like a hook. So the minnow, when you hook it underneath, which I, what I do is I hook it underneath the, uh, the dorsal fin, the minnow will sit there sideways and just go ahead and swim, right? So when you're dead sticking, like I said, like I'm doing right now, um, you're just setting your pole down, whether it be on the ground like this one right there, or on a bucket like I'm doing with this one, 
and you're just watching the end of it, I get these whip tips or these really sensitive noodle tips on the, uh, on the ice rods and you just watch those. There's a couple of other ways that you can watch them as well when you're dead sticking or just leaving it sit. And that is um, you can get a spring bobber. So what they do is they go right on the end of your pole and they kind of sit up like this. And then when you get a bite, it kind of goes down like that. And you see every little bite. Um, you can also get foam bobbers. And I have some of those that I'll show you here. So you can get some foam bobbers like these. They're really nice because they have the bobber stops in the package. And then as it shows on the package, you can go ahead and cut those for whatever size you desire. Some people like to cut them nice and low. Some people like to leave them the same length. I like them this nice length and they just lay across the hole and then you can see the, uh, the real light bites, especially on bluegills. They just sit there and vibrate and then you know you can just kind of reel up into the fish. So dead sticking is one of the best ways to fish for panfish or any other type of fish really in the winter. Now another good technique for ice fishing in the winter is, and you wouldn't ice fish any other time of the year, just so you know, I'm gonna just go ahead and drop that bomb on ya right there, okay? So <laughs> when you're ice fishing, um, another good technique is jigging. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that or a lot of different ways you can do that. You can be really aggressive with the jig. You can kind of sit there and bounce it just a little bit. And I'll kind of show you a couple of different variations of the two. So a nice aggressive jig would be like this. You know, you're kind of popping it about two feet up in the water column. You're getting things interested. Here comes a fish right there. Was that, was I getting something interested there? That was maybe a, a fish. Huh. So you're just kind of you're just kind of jigging, and we are fishing right now, so anything can happen. But you're just kind of jigging nice and aggressively right here, right? And another way to jig is to go ahead and just pop it. You know, just kind of get it into a spot and just kind of pop it. You go on about two or three inches, you're making that minnow just kind of dance. You're just kind of right above them, making them, you know making them look at it. And you don't need to have a vexilar to do this or a fish finder like this. You can do this just by finding the bottom of your lake, wherever that is, you know, you just let this thing all the way to the bottom and then just start reeling up two, three reels, kind of go ahead and fish right there, reel up another two or three reels, go ahead and fish right there, slide back down, just going up and down the water column and looking for those fish and keep track of where you are because if you're six reels off the bottom, you know that the next time you can likely go six reels off the bottom again and you're probably going to be inside the fish there, right? So just uh, just keep track of that and you don't have to buy one of these. But if you have the opportunity to either use one of the fish finders like the Vexlar or the Markham or Helix or any of the other you know finders that there are out there, go ahead and use it or get it and buy it and you know, you're going to be able to you're going to be able to get on the fish a little easier. But if you don't, if you just want to try it out, again, just drop this thing all the way to the bottom, kind of work that water column all the way up, and you may just find the fish. There's this and this. I mean, I've got fish all the way from here to here, you guys. But just this one zone has been kind of what I call the kill zone. When they show up in that zone, they've really been bitey. So now that I've kind of found that, I'm gonna kind of jig that zone and see if I can get a mark or two to come in. Not too hard yet, because it's a, uh, it's still a finicky bite tonight. Maybe I can get something to come into that area. This is all part of just learning the lake. Got him. Yep, on that new bait. Excellent. Oh, oh, he's a puller. Yeah, nice. All right, on the new bait, dude. Yeah, check it out. Little squiggly guy. Huh? Little white one with the blue flake. That's cool. Yeah, I think this might even be close to a keeper. That's a pretty nice fish. Yeah, yeah. Put on the new bait. Got myself a nice, healthy crappie with that bad boy. You want this one, Mikey? This looks like a good enough one. Go show it to your dad and see what he thinks. Okay. If he doesn't think so, bring it back to me and I'll put it back. Okay. Okay? Awesome. All right. So a great app to get for anybody that likes ice fishing or fishing in general is the Navionics app. It's $10 a year. It's very reliable and it shows you depths 
right? So what you want to do when you're looking for a crappie hole and looking for where to drill is you want to find these nice deep holes in the middle of the, uh, the more shallow areas. See how there's a lot of shallow areas surrounding that? And then you see right in there, you can see it's 26 feet. And then when you get to the middle of that hole, what is it? 28 feet. That's a very good depth for crappies. Now I'm catching them right now in 19 feet. I just happen to be in an area where that's about the deepest that it is. But you can go ahead and look up any lake in your area. This happens to be Lake Minnetonka. Um, and you can look up any lake in your area, look for those nice big crappie basins and just start by drilling right in the middle of that you know, deep spot. And if you don't have a Vexlar or a fish finder, just drop all the way to the bottom and work that column all the way to the top. If you do have a Vexlar fish finder, just start drilling holes and start looking down the holes and seeing what you see. I mean, if you see a bunch of fish, stop right there and see if you got some aggressive fish. It's probably some crappies. I remember the first guy that I ever ice fished with that really taught me how to ice fish and to catch fish. I mean, he was out after a limit in a short of amount of time. I mean, that was like his big thing. If he could get a limit in half an hour, that's what he'd brag about. But the first guy that ever taught me, sat me down, he had a Vexlar, I didn't. And he'd take, he would actually give me these weights that you can buy at the, uh, at the, at the bait shop, right? These weights right here. And he'd hook it to my jig, right? He'd tell me to hook it to my jig and then go ahead and drop it all the way down the hole. And when he get to the bottom, He'd tell me on the rod, see this little click spot right here? He'd tell me to wrap the line right there, and then I knew that's where the bottom was, right? So then I could drop it all the way down until it stopped because it was hooked to my reel, and I'd know that's the bottom, and then I could just go ahead and reel up a foot, reel up a foot, you know what I mean? And, and just kind of work the column that way. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but if you get a big fish and you gotta work that thing, you gotta kind of you know let it run and come back, it's gonna snap you off basically every time at that little hook spot. So my suggestion is, is rather than using this, which I have a few of now, right? What you do is, like I said, you get that tungsten jig, you run it on the end of it, and that's what Mikey B showed me. Mikey B was the one that actually showed me that. Now, the first guy, he was about bobbers and about getting all the way to the bottom and going for those crappies, right? Mikey B's about going for the crappies, but he's about the light tips, uh, dead sticking, um, no bobbers, watching those dead sticks, you know, and making sure, jigging the fish off the bottom. So, you know, there's really things that I learned from both people that help a lot, but as you can see, this is a very successful way of fishing. So another way to fish in the winter that is absolutely fun, and it's actually the way that I first started fishing by myself, um, is tip up fishing. Flag up, flag up. Your flag's up. Pretty big minnow on there, so. Sp spinning? Oh, yeah. Got one? There you go. Right away, as soon as you put it out. Right away. Oh, I just saw it, dude, under the ice. This is going to be real cool. I just saw it under the ice. Oh, wow. I don't have my phone on me. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. Oh, oh look at me. that. Nice. Right away. Yeah. You just put that down. Yep. Just put it down. That's a pretty fish. That's a really nice northern. Oh wow. Very nice. Good call on the uh, tip up down. Wow. Look at that boys. Wow, that's pretty awesome. That makes me want to put one out. Yeah. That was really fast. That was really cool. Nice one. Can I hold them? Sure. Very want healthy. To send it back down? Sure. Okay. Let's send it back down. It's a good one. Yep, there you go. We'll give them a little revival first. Make sure you, they're pretty feisty and pretty healthy, but now watch out for this hook here. You gonna swim off, big mama? John, we gotta walk our rod so we get that northern. Come on. She's going. She looks like she wants to. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
Nice fish, buddy. Cool. Good job. Good call. So I've got six sons at home, and I would get what I what we call our little boys, and now they're in ninth, eleventh, and eleventh grade. But our three youngest sons, I would get with me, and we take my phone, and I had Netflix on my phone. We drive the minivan onto the ice. You know, there'd be about a foot of ice, and a really awesome lake near our house, uh, Lake Demontreville in Lake Elmo, Minnesota. Lots of bass and northern pike in there. So we go down there, I'd park on the ice and I'd have four people. We can have two lines each. So I would put out eight tip ups and I didn't even have an ice drill at the time. I would just take a hatchet and I would hatch it open people's holes that they had from before and just get it all nice and open. And I'd put my tip ups down and uh, we'd have them all over the place out in front of us and, and they'd be big, long, you know, we'd, we had the kind of extendable flags. So we'd have them super long and uh, these things would just uh, go off and they would just be like, boo, 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 boo. and we would get so excited. We would run and grab them and we pull in largemouth bass and in that lake, largemouth bass are catch and release only. So there's a lot of big ones in there and we'd pull in a lot of Northern Pike and stuff and I'd clean some up and we'd eat them, but we just had a lot of fun. And that is an easy way. You get tip ups. They're super simple to rig. Some of them come pre-rigged already, but they're very straightforward, very easy to use. And you don't even need an ice drill. Like I said, you bring a hammer or a hatchet and you just go through other holes that people have, uh, have drilled for you. So uh, just another tip about how you can have more fun on the ice. Going for the Hail Mary. I'm hoping because I see those single marks showing up that I can dance around with those with a minnow and one of them will make a mistake. Come on. Got him. Did it. Yes. I knew you would do it. I knew you'd make a mistake. Yeah, man. I told you they were coming. Oh, yeah. Nice. Nice fish. All right. Oh, man. Mike's out there packing up, and I am trying to put a couple on the board. Nice pancake, man. <laughs> Thank you. That's a nice fish. That's a good keeper size. That's a perfect keeper size, actually. And it's got that golden color to it. You know, I was talking to Brent the other day, and he was watching a video that I was editing from a small lake up north, and he was saying, he really loves when they have this golden color to them. Yeah. I uh, I personally like when they're more white and silver, but to each their own, man. This is a beautiful fish. Really nice. Going on the ice with the mic. There you go, buddy. Thank you, sir. All right. See if we can get another one real quick before we go, huh? And what I've noticed is that the black spots don't really show up until later. Yeah. Like right now, it's real kind of hard to see that it's kinda a black Kind of purpley and stuff, yeah. Yeah. That's cool pretty cool this is what the inside of the shack looks like from the outside how cool is that huh pretty awesome well i'm glad i was able to share a whole bunch of tips with you that have been shared with me over the years and made me a much better ice fisherman um, at least a few different techniques dead stick uh, bobber just kind of watching the end of your pole jigging and um, don't forget about tip-ups super easy to rig so get out there, get on the ice, search down a couple of little crappie holes in your local lake, and uh, maybe you can get yourself some slabs. For me, and for all those cool crappies that you can catch, Fish Brain Chain, out.